So, I have a confession. I uh, I struggle to to sharpen knives, and as you can see on the table, I have uh, quite shamefully invested in a lot of different things over the years to try to help me do better. Right to to get the right tools to get things sharp. And the latest edition is the Hapstone R2. Um, so before I start talking about that, let me just show you where I've come from. Um, because over the years, like I said, I, I have amassed a, a rather disgraceful number of sharpening systems. So way back in the day, I thought I was gonna shave with a straight razor. Um, that was stupid, and I learned very quickly, and by very quickly, I mean the very first time I shaved with a straight razor, I found out that that was a dumb idea. But in that process, I acquired uh, a set of Norton Waterstones, and these Waterstones are very high quality, and they're not cheap. And so I got a full set um, to work up and sharpen my blades with those. Um, and they work really well. I mean, for what they are, they are, you know, simply sharpening stones, big flat stones. Um, but it turns out that I suck at freehand sharpening. And so uh, next up, once I got done, you know, convincing myself that water stones weren't going to help me, I went to this thing, which is some cheap, I forget, I got this off of eBay or Amazon. So this thing's like a knockoff of a uh, Edge Pro Apex sharpener. Um, and I've got, you know, diamond stones that I got for it. They're short. They're like four inch stones. Um, and this thing works when it works. But man, it was just a total pain in the butt to use. Uh, the clamp system sucks. I, um, you know, the, the base, it's got this crappy suction cup system that never really worked very well. Um, and so it was, look, I, it, I saved money. It was a piece of junk. There's a reason why it was cheap. So next up after that came the Ken Onion WorkSharp system. And to be honest, it's pretty decent. And I use this for the past few years. Um, and it works. And it works pretty well. My problems with it are um, it's not very precise in its control of the sharpening angle. Uh, number two, it's really fast for better or worse. Um, and you can tear up a knife real quick with this thing and get it in a place that you really don't want it to be. And this is going to be hard to see, but I'll show you what I mean. Um, let's see if I can get this to show up. So this is a Kershaw leak. And if you look at the nose of that thing, um, you may be able to make out that it's a little bit rounded. Now, I have actually cleaned this thing back up. It, it was worse. But you can round the nose of a blade really easy uh, with the Ken Onion WorkSharp or the WorkSharp system simply because of the way it works. And I'm not necessarily going to say that that's a critical flaw. It's a user error issue, but um, it is rather easy. Um, the other thing that I kind of don't like too much is, again, it's not necessarily a flaw. It's just uh, an opinion thing. The blade shape that it gives you, the edge shape, is uh, is kind of like a concave point. Um, it's not a nice sharp angle because the belts basically rub around the edge of the blade. And so... Um, you get, again, it's a good strong edge, but you do get kind of a, a round profile to the point of your blade with these things. Um, and on my nice kitchen knives and stuff is really where I don't like this. Um, I find that the Ken Indian system works better for big blades than small blades. And so if you're sharpening like large knives or equipment, this thing actually pretty good. Um, for small knives uh, and for knives that you really want to be really careful with, and not too great. Um, so again, I'm not saying this is bad. This is a really good system. It's fast. It does get things sharp, uh, but it can eat a little blade up. And because of its size, like I said, on a little pocket knife or something, 
Um, you actually, like, you get the knife all the way in there and the way it works, it's just, I don't know, it didn't work very well for smaller blades. Um, and like I said, it, you can, if you use it wrong, really damage a blade really quick. And that has led me to spending yet more money on this thing, the Hapstone R2. So the Hapstone R2, it's, it's made in Ukraine, and it's one of these newer kind of takes on this fixed angle system. They, they've been around for a while. Um, again, multiple companies have made this style of sharpener over the years. Um, over the past few years, I've seen a lot in the uh, the area from like TS Prof, which is a Russian company. Um, I think WorkSharp, they've made a couple of systems that kind of work the same way. Um, and this is the one that I decided to go with, you know, for better or worse, I don't know necessarily that there's a whole bunch between them as far as is one really better than the other. I don't know. It comes down to probably small preferences is probably what it comes down to. Cause you know, why did I pick this one? Uh, you know, it looked like it was well-made. The price was not cheap, but not stratospheric. Um, it looks like a good flexible system. So, you know, here we are. So let me just start off from the beginning. This is not going to be a how to get your knives scary sharp video. That's not what I'm gonna be doing. I'm not gonna teach you how to sharpen knives because I'm just not good enough at it to think that I'm capable of teaching somebody any better than a ton of other videos on YouTube. But what I will show you are the features of this system. I've used it now to sharpen a handful of knives and I think I can give you a little bit of input on its flaws which are pretty minor in, in all of these systems. I think it's more of trade-offs and what do you like versus another system. Um, I bought a few accessories for it. I'll give you my opinions on which one of those I think, yeah, I'm glad I spent that money and which ones I'm like, eh, I probably shouldn't have bought this. Um, so we'll go into that stuff. So let me clear the table and I'll get some knives out and show you kind of how the thing works and what I think is nice about it and what I think is maybe less nice. I will give you a couple of tips that I found on using these systems that I needed to learn because whenever you get one of these fixed blade systems in your head, it's going to be put the knife in, sharpen the thing, and it's just magic, amazing. It's close, but there are a few things that I've learned about using them that I think if you're really new and you're like me and you just freaking struggle to get knives sharp, um, to keep in mind when you're using this thing, that'll help actually get your knives sharp. So uh, let me clear the table off and then we'll get to looking at stuff. All right, so let's take a look at the sharpener itself and what you get with the, the base purchase. Um, so your base unit, you get your, uh, your bottom plate, your guide rod comes in through the bottom and then it's held um, at the bottom here with a little tensioner. It's got a pretty interesting little adjustment system because again, you know, you put a knife in, your knife's gonna be sitting flat and then your angle is controlled by how high you set this little pivot point. And it's really nice because it rotates around smooth. Uh, so this little block where this rod goes in now actually has linear bearings in it. So it does go very smooth um, in there. So it's not like a bushing or something. It's actually a bearing system. So this big log and rod is actually in two pieces. It's got a little coupler here that you put together. And then your stones are held in up front by this system. It's a couple of blocks and on one, it's got the little, little thumb screws. Let me uh, unscrew that, take the thing out. There's a spring back here that compresses. Put your sharpening stone in there and then this thing can adjust the clamp and then you get the spring force on the back. Um, to hold that stone into place. Um, and so you can use, I think, anything, you know, just a few inches long out to like a six inch stone. I've got six inch stones that I bought. These are the uh, Venev uh, double sided, one inch wide, six inch stones. I've got everything. Uh, it's a three stone set. I got this from Gridomatic. So my core stone goes down to roughly like an 80 grit. And on the other side is more like a 160 or 200. I've got uh, mid stones, which are like a 240 to 400 double sided. And then my top end stones, like a 800, 1200 stone. And so uh, it gets you all the way from working up a rough edge and shaping a blade up to a pretty good 
but not quite polished edge. And that's enough for me. You can get higher end stones if you really want to get a mirror polish. Uh, these are enough. So these are additional. Um, the base unit itself doesn't come with any stones. Um, you also get in the base units uh, this little flip system. And so this thing, you've got your two adjustable clamps. Let me turn this. And then this thing just rotates. So you can get your blade clamped in, and then to go side to side, you just flip the knife back and forth. And so it's really nice. Um, there's no flip lever or anything. You can literally just turn this thing. But it's got detents in there on 180 degrees so that this thing, you can easily just flip it back and forth. Um, this has to be assembled, but it's pretty easy. It comes with Allen wrenches, um, but there's a couple of little cap head screws back here. So uh, this thing just pops off and uh, you can see you can adjust the spring tension on the back. The clamps are pretty interesting too because they've got little tensioners at the back so you can unscrew that and slide these back and forth very easily or take that thing all the way off and these are offset so that you can have them out wide or you flip them around and then you can adjust it uh, very narrow so you can hold blades kind of as wide or narrow as these things will adjust. Um, you can also get additional different kinds of clamps if you want. You can mount up to like four on this thing without problem. So you could, I think, pretty easily hold a 12 inch blade with this thing. You might want, depending on how thin your blade is, a couple other uh, clamps in the middle to keep it from flexing too much. These clamps work with like a cantilever. So you can see there's one screw here and another one here. And so basically um, you back this screw off, you tighten the front one so it's gonna clamp. And then this one, when you push it down, that will basically push the back up and add incrementally additional clamping force. But you also do wanna be careful um, that you have these backed out or else you can bend this thing. These are milled aluminum. So uh, they're not indestructible, but they are replaceable. So um, you can replace anything if you do end up bending one of these and it gets damaged. So I bought some accessories. And so I'll show you some of the accessories I got for this system. Uh, one of them is a magnetic clamping plate. And so this one, again, you put it on here, get it tightened up and so how this works is it's got magnets under the front and it's kind of it's very strange all right so uh you've got your four magnets and these arms can be adjusted and so you can get these narrower or wider as needed for whatever particular knife um, you happen to be working on and then it's got these which are basically a way to set um, a repeatable backside stop um, for different curvatures and stuff of your blade spine. And so what this thing's really handy for is something like this paring knife, right? So it's a super thin blade. It's not super long. And if you use the regular clamps, the problem is, is that the clamps have to have enough to bite onto, and then you can't get the right angle to sharpen that blade. So with this, um, you get the thing set up and you can clamp your blade in, and then you can get this thing set up against the back. And so you can hold that blade into place and then uh, pretty easily and repeatedly uh, flip that thing around. Now, we'll say uh, this back kind of bottoms out. And I don't like that because it can be a little weird um, to get things perfectly like straight to where um, if you flip the blade back side to side, uh, can be a bit of a hassle, but this is really great for uh, very thin blades that aren't very deep either, um, because it really does, it holds that thing into place pretty darn well. So when I said pretty darn well, again, I'm not making laser beams in here, so I'm not like showing off, but look, this is a really cheap, you know, like I forget, I paid like 10 bucks for this thing, little Victorian ox. Um, utility knife and it easily like it I mean it sh I mean this thing's sharp right I mean it's it it holds it extremely well um, so that you can get really thin blades really sharp and so that magnetic platform to me um, was worth the money it's not cheap um, but it, it was definitely a good addition 
uh, to this system if you're going to be you know doing smaller blades, little pocket knife blades, um, thin utility knives, and things like that. Um, it works really, really well. Um, the other thing that you can use it for are like fillet knives. Because again, you can get that fillet knife up there, uh, get it where you want nice and square, and it will hold that pretty well. And like I said, you can adjust these things so that you can get a magnet um, out there closer to the tip and hold that thing pretty well. Now, we'll say um, with this particular fillet knife, um, this thing I actually sharpened with the clamps and I found that the clamps did work uh, well enough. And like I said, this is not me trying to say, hey, look, you know, I'm a crazy good knife sharpener, but it did hold it uh, well enough that, I mean, this thing's just, it's, it's crazy. Um, so it does work. Uh, so that is to say, while the magnetic attachment is really, really, really great, um, like I said, I sharpened that fillet knife with the clamps. It didn't have any problems. So I don't know that this is an absolutely must have item. Um, and so if you're looking to get in as cheap as possible, I might leave this one off, this, this magnetic chuck system, magnetic clamp system. I might leave that off and then figure out if you need it later. Because again, you don't have to buy it right up front. And I found that even for thin fillet knives, the clamps worked well enough. So uh, next up, as far as things that I purchased as uh, accessories, was uh, this fine tuning adjuster. And so this thing, you basically get it locked in. And then when you're adjusting your height, um, you can use this as kind of a little fine adjustment. I don't think this thing is necessary. I kind of wish I hadn't wasted my money on it because it turns out that adjusting in one tenth of a degree increments um, isn't that hard uh, even without it. So as far as one thing that I would say, definitely I would not have spent my money on if I had it to do over again was this. The mag attachment, I would get again. This one, I wouldn't. Um, next up on the accessories are the end stops and that's this thing right here, and there's another one right here. And what this does is it limits, pop this thing off, it limits the travel back and forth so that your stone doesn't go off the end of the blade. And these, I would say, are not just things that I'm glad I bought. These, I would say, are absolutely necessary. You really need these things because if you ever run that blade off the stone and then aren't paying attention or run it back into it, you can cost yourself a ton of work trying to redo that edge because you can fold one over pretty quick by uh, bumping the end pretty hard with that stone. So these, I would say, uh, they're must-haves. I'm actually frustrated. I think those should be part of the kit. Um, they're not super complicated. It's just like a little aluminum ring with a thumb screw and a spring. That's kind of all there is to it. So to me, hat stone, I really think they should include those because they're that necessary to this system that I just think they should be included. Now, the one other thing that I would say, it's not a hapstone item, but something that you should have if you're gonna use this type of system um, is an electronic level. So let me reconfigure this thing and get it set up the way I would typically use it. And I'll show you why you want a magnetic level. Probably also a good time to mention that the changeover going from a uh, one clamp system to another uh, is really quick. You know, I mean, it, it really doesn't take long to flip this thing uh, from that mag clamp over to the regular clamps. All right, so let's put a stone in it. So here's how the stones go in. Again, you kind of get that thing in there and then you push and make uh, kind of, you just tension this thing up uh, with this end. And I tend to get it pretty darn tight in there, make sure that everything's uh, squared up and close to the bottom, and then you just tighten that thumb screw, and there you've got your stone in, and that's how they're held. Um, it has slight bevels, but these are square in stones, and they hang in there pretty well. I'd say one of my frustrations with the stone holder is these things can kind of rotate a little. Um, you can see I can rotate that stone in there. It ends up not 
being a big problem, practically speaking. Like it doesn't actually cause problems because the stone actually ends up following the blade edge pretty well anyway. Even if it tilts, it's tilting because the, the knife edge is pushing on it. Um, so it's not a huge gripe, but that's one annoyance with the, the way the, uh, the stones are retained. If you've got stones that have the bevel on the back, then they won't be able to tilt like that. But um, the way I've got this set up with those square in stones, it is an issue. All right, so uh, let me flip this thing over. Got to tighten those clamps up. So, um, like I said, you want to get an electronic level with this thing, and I'll show you kind of how I set it up. And um, you don't have to do it like this. This is just again how I did it. So I've got a flat spatula here, and here's a plug for a uh, Dexter. Um, kitchen utensils. They are a lot of them are made in the United States, um, and they're uh, pretty nice. So I'm going to put this spatula in here, and the reason I'm doing this is it gives me a nice flat surface to index off of. So again, I'm just going to tighten all the clamps down. All right, so I've got that spatula in there, and so here's how the angles kind of work on this thing. So when you put a knife in, you know, obviously uh, a lot of people want to know that they're getting the right angle on that blade. So this can pose some issues depending on how your blade is grammed. So like um, on this butcher's knife, it's got a good flat side to grip onto, right? And so if you put this thing in there, you can get the magnetic level on the flat and measure the angle then of how this stone makes contact with the blade edge. And so what happens is you'll set the stone like that you will indicate off of your blade, right? So here, you know, if I get this thing and I turn it on, so let me get it on flat. So um, you get it set up, uh, you index it to your blade, right? So then you zero it out, right? So it's gonna zero out. And then you can, it's got this flat steel section on the back of the stone holder, and you can say, okay, well, this is now the incident angle on the edge of the blade. And then you just raise or lower back here to increase or decrease uh, your blade angle. So um, the reason I use the spatula sometimes is that a lot of knives don't have parallel flats on the blade. So like these kitchen knives like this, you know, they're just a full kind of grind. And so the blade itself is going to be potentially at an angle um, in this holder. And so if you use a spatula, I know that it's a, a good kind of flat on both sides. So what I use the spatula for is it provides me something flat that I can get a good zero reference from. Um, then I can put the knife in. I'll know that the angle of the holders and everything is at the same angle the spatula's at. And then I can adjust for whatever weird grind the, uh, the knife may have. Because what I found is that there are some flat spots that you could potentially indicate um, on this thing, but they're not great. Uh, they can be off by half a degree. So, like I said, you really do want one of these digital gauges and it, a good trick to make sure that you're squared um, on your blade on your knife is to use a flat piece of metal to indicate off of for that zero angle. Um, the other thing I'll say is I would not get this specific model of digital gauge because this is a Klein and I had this already. I didn't buy this with this system. I just, I had this digital level. Um, it is really nice for doing regular work with, but it's got these channels in the side and that's for like, if you ever set it on a rod or anything, it can kind of self-center. Um, but on this stone holder, um, there's not a ton of width. And so it's really easy to get this thing canned like that. And that can throw off um, your angle adjustment. It, it can be kind of tricky to get that thing centered. So if you can find one of these with a nice flat bottom, um, that's what I would go with as far as a, a digital angle meter. So I, I think that's pretty much all I can say that's, that's going to be overly helpful for you as far as using these things. Again, this is not a tutorial on sharpening. I wanted to give you an overview of the system, give you a couple of quick tips that 
you know, I found in using this thing on making sure that you get a nice sharp blade. I think that's my overall, I am satisfied with the purchase. It's not cheap, but it works. It seems much better um, than that cheap, similar system. This thing's pretty sturdy. Um, the bottom, it is pretty heavy. This thing, by the way, this is steel. Um, so this big plate's pretty heavy. Um, it doesn't tip very easy. So I've, I've worked, like I said, a, a pretty good heavy kitchen knife with it. Um, if you're using really huge knives, whenever you turn the thing, you know, you do have to be careful that you, um, you don't hit the table because if you got a really, really long knife rotating this thing, you might want to hang it off the end of the table. Um, but otherwise, I mean, everything's pretty straightforward. I think anybody, um, you know, they don't need me to tell them kind of all the obvious things about using one. I think it's a good system. It works well. The clamps are good. I don't know that you need the the fancier clamps. The basic ones that it comes with, to me, worked really, really well. Um, it's versatile. I've sharpened long, thin blades. I've sharpened short, thin blades. I've sharpened a couple of pocket knives on it. No problem. Um, I've sharpened, you know, heavier kitchen knives. Uh, thinner kitchen knives. I've sharpened a variety of blades on the thing. It's very versatile. It worked for all of them. Every knife, you know, that I've worked with, I have been able to get them, you know, just really, really sharp. Um, again, I'm not saying that I'm making laser beams and oh my gosh, this thing's the best thing ever. I think all of these types of fixed angle systems kind of do the same thing more or less. Um, but this one certainly works, and uh, I can say it seems to be made well. I like the features. I like everything about it. I do wish I hadn't gotten this fine adjustment because it's just really unnecessary, and that was money I didn't need to spend. But everything else, uh, yeah, I'd say uh, it's a pretty good deal. So uh, if you got any thoughts or questions about using the thing or any other uh, ideas, feel free to leave them in a comment. Thanks.